much in depth, but I guarantee you there's gonna be something out there that you can engage in at almost a completely free level and get your whole content marketing flow just on another level. So as I wrap up today, just wanna to make a couple of last points. Uh, first off, be the one to provide content that answers specific questions people have and provide them with something of value they can't get anywhere else. This will in turn elevate your brand from a commodity to something people embrace, okay? So again, it, it goes about the substance, right? Like you want substantive content. If you're producing something at a level and of a nature that no one else is, then you're the go-to guy, you know? And that's relative to everybody's industry, right? Like, oh, you're the guy who answers something. Oh, you're the car talk guy. You're the, okay, whatever your industry is, whatever you do. I mean, there's plenty of examples of people who are doing that well, whatever that is. I don't care if you bake, you cook, you cook, whatever. There is, there, there's, uh, there was a guy who got fired, I think, from his job mixing paint and he was doing TikTok videos. You know, and this was, he's just an employee. There. It's not like he was making money or anything like that. He's just, okay, let's do this. Let's do this. He's just, and he got fired for it. Uh, and he was actually presented the VP of, uh, of the company with a, genuine plan to use this um, for content marketing purposes. Got shot down, never even got a conversation with the VP, and they fired the dude. Now, was that the smartest strategy for that company? Probably not. I mean, it's a paint company. You know, how exciting is paint? But this kid that worked for them, who was already on payroll, came up with this idea and was gonna just hand it to him for free, and they didn't want to pursue it. So, you know, it, it can be something as simple as that but just in a creative context that just makes it more meaty for your audience, whatever that is defined by, to come and find you and get you popular. Because again, you know, go make that request, get that link to the pool company so you can see what I'm talking about. That, their story, it's about a five, maybe a little bit longer minute video um, that goes into their whole story. And it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So when you say, content marketing, how do I do it? How's that gonna work out for me? Whatever. I mean, you can look at stories from various companies in different industries who have done it. Now, it's not gonna necessarily be the way you are gonna go about it because you might have a different business model, but it supports this idea that if you do it right and you do it well and you put some real effort behind it, it's gonna work for you, okay? Whatever that means, whatever that means for you. Uh, lastly, promote your content to extend the reach of publication. Social media is a great tool for syndicating original content and a small ad spend budget on the right content can go a long way. I, I know you're all familiar with Facebook. That's an easy one to talk about. So Facebook, you can put a post up there and then boost that post. Now that doesn't take more than maybe sometimes more than 20 bucks. It's relatively cheap. But remember, there's other factors in that equation that yes, Facebook may tell you you're gonna potentially reach this many people if you spend that much money. But impressions are one thing, clicks are another, you know? <laughs> so is that ad going to be delivered to that many people? Sure. Are they actually gonna see it and click on it? Who knows? You know, there are things that you can do. Word of mouth, word of mouth, yeah, but you know, social media ends up being the electronic word of mouth these days. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna get uh, a lot further putting some action there than just, I mean, especially now. I mean, people aren't able to have those conversations. Why, because they're all, locked up at home and not going anywhere. We're in a mask and you can't hear them half the time. So the best way to go about that, especially given the current climate of things, I would say go online, go through social media. I mean, people are just, just absorbing this content at insane levels right now. I mean, like the data that's coming through from what people are doing online when they're at home right now is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. So trends are changing based on all that information and what businesses are doing to respond is, it's very interesting. So um, you got to keep that in mind. You know, in this current climate, is this something I, that I want to try to get through to people by personal contact, word of mouth, or is this something I can do online through social media, which is almost the same. And that's what I meant by word of mouth is on social media, people talking yes. to their friends. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Walmart well, is competing with Amazon through TikTok. Right now. <laughs> Hundred million There's, people. Yeah. No, and TikTok, it's this whole crazy thing, which is weird because when you think, I'm like, well, what's the difference between TikTok and Snapchat? And these right, like the differences are subtle and ultimately there's good marketing that goes behind those things. And with the marketing comes the audience, the audience 
kind of starts a snowball effect. Um, but, you know, there's novelties and gimmicks and things that can be explored through each one of those. Is TikTok right for you? I don't know. Look at your business model, come up with some ideas that might be relevant using that channel, and maybe the answer is yes, but maybe the answer is also no. You know, just because Twitter exists doesn't mean you should have a Twitter account just because. Not every business needs one. You know, yes, you want to reach your audience. Yes, a lot of people are on Twitter, but is that the right medium for you to be coming at them? So those are decisions that you have to make. And if you need help making those decisions, you know, this is definitely one of the reasons why my company exists. You know, we, could, we consult people a lot, even if we're not actually working on a campaign, just to get them in the frame of mind so they understand what needs to be done moving forward. So it's not the same for everybody, but, um, but definitely there are resources and people available to help you figure all that out. Because I know it's a lot. Trust me, this stuff did not come by me overnight. But ultimately, if you have a mindset of success and you know that these are avenues that you want to pursue, there is stuff out there for you to use. There are tools, there are people, and to what extent your budget can outsource things, you know, all that stuff is available. But you can get a lot done for very cheap. Very cheap. So, um, that's gonna be it for the presentation today. I do, I know you guys were real good about questions during the presentation, that's great. If anybody's got some questions they wanna throw into the mix now, even through the Zoom, please go ahead and throw them. No questions. Just we got one. Real quick one. Yeah, sure. Facebook blocks my URL for some reason. So I try to, yeah, I may even ask for it, but I put it in and they block it. Okay, so if you've, if you've been <coughs> blocked by Facebook, because I have other clients that it's happened to them too, uh, you've got a problem. Um, there's a couple ways you can handle that. You can try to like petition Facebook and try to get it whitelisted and that kind of thing. Um, that usually doesn't go that well. So your best bet is to abandon the domain and then move on to something else. I know, I know that's not what you want to hear. If you want the platform to work for you, those are the things that you would need to do. Much like with Yelp. You know, there's one silver bullet when it comes to Yelp. Businesses ask me this all the time. How do I ditch all these bad reviews and get away from because this is, okay, great. That's not the typical experience, but that's all I see on here. If you're not really a one-star business and you want to ditch all these bad reviews, there's only one way to do it. You have to move because they are geo-targeted to the physical location of that business. You literally can be one address number over and that's enough to make it go away. I mean, I'm relatively new. So why would Facebook you're well, your domain may have some polluted history to it. That's the thing, people don't realize this. You get a domain and you think just because you got it, you're the first guy to get it. Not, not always the case. That domain could have been burned many times over and you're, you're inheriting a polluted history. Now, you're supposed to do, well, in theory, what you should do is a link analysis and a link profile of a new domain when you acquire it. There's tools and things that help you do that, but ultimately, uh, you want to examine that because if you get something like, oh man, this is a great domain, oh, nobody ever got this, and maybe somebody got it, burned it, and <laughs> you know, ditched it, and now you're the guy picking it up, and you don't know Whoa. any of that, and you're like, oh, but that, and that's what you want to control. So can I just purchase a new domain for cheap and auto forward to my website? Do you think that would work, or they probably don't? Just... Well, okay, don't try to do some redirecting, you know, scheme that will get that URL. Like move. Just move everything over. Know that you've encountered an issue, identify why that issue has been encountered. Okay. Move over to an unpolluted property that will allow for you to reproduce your business model. And do a link analysis and not, first. Yeah, do a link analysis. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to do that now on the domain to see why that's even happening. Yeah. Because that's that's weird. If it's it's you just got it, it's relatively new, you know you didn't burn it, like it's obviously got some polluted history. Okay. Cool. So Thank you. How much would it cost for you to do a link analysis? I'm just curious. Good order of magnitude. Uh, I mean, we we usually do things like that for like a couple hundred bucks. I mean, it's it's going to open up a Pandora's box potentially. So it could be a very mundane profile, not a lot going on. Oh, maybe one or two links. Okay, cool. Or maybe there's nothing there. Great. But then it open it could open up into this. Oh my God, you need to not do this. Like that domain you just got is worthless. This profile that we've got here shows that it's been burned, like you need to just let it go. And that might be the answer, but it's, you know, we've, like I said, we've got the third party resources that we use for this. It gives us a complete layout of every, everything that is attached to that domain. 
and then we can tell you if like maybe somebody built a link profile from like a porn website that's taking you down that you don't even know about. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's that's reverse SEO. That's black hat. We don't do that kind of stuff. But if you if you if you can imagine that links built in bad neighborhoods will produce bad results no matter who they're going to, you can sink your competitor in theory by producing those bad links. But that's don't do that. Don't do that. That's 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 that. Post a new URL, Facebook and as an example. Can you post the old one on WeChat, Facebook, and Twitter? Okay, I'm sorry. Take the old URL, it's been bad for Facebook, mm -hmm. throw that on WeChat, same for that on Facebook, and put the new URL on Facebook. You yeah, use? you could do that. My thing is, is that um, you're potentially diluting your brand when you do that. It's better to come up with one central domain that you know is, is good at and from there do everything. But I'm young enough, it's not gonna hurt me to switch a URL. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean if, you're, if you're just kind of getting rolling with certain things, like your URL issue right now isn't too bad. Yeah. I mean, really where that comes into play is like businesses have been well established and they've got so much into it that it's like now to deal with an issue like that, you're gonna do one of two things. You're gonna clean up the link profile or you're gonna ditch the domain and start all over. That's too expensive and too time consuming. Sometimes it's a link profile cleanup. And there is a way to do that. You can't clean up a link profile. It takes time. It takes a lot of time. How do you do that? You have to disavow the links. Now disavowing the links is not fun because it's an entire process of you going and showing that you've done all this, is going to the webmaster for those domains and requesting that it be removed. There's a time frame that if they don't respond, then you can move forward to going to Google and having them basically reference your attempt to remove that and then you know basically discount it. It's not that the link won't exist anymore. Google will choose not to allocate that to your domain anymore. It's, it's a whole process. It can take months sometimes, depending on what's going on. But you have to try to go to the webmaster first and say, hey, this link, take it down. But that's why websites have those webmaster support admin emails that you can email, because if there is an issue, you need to be able to contact them and say, hey, here's the problem. You've got a link, you've got a this, you've got a, and there's a problem here, you guys need to fix it. But webmasters for those websites are notoriously unresponsive. So Google has another way that you can escalate it beyond that, but you need to at least try that first. Because Google, if everybody just went to Google and said, hey, I got a bunch of bad links, take them off. Like, no, that's, no, that's not what Google does, okay? Now Google offers this feature as a means of trying to clean up link profiles so that they can better represent the search results. But ultimately, they know that if if all they said is just come come to Google and we'll fix it, like that's gonna create an issue for them. So they say, look, go to the webmaster first. Try to get the link removed. If that doesn't work, come to us, show that you tried that, and then we'll do what we can to discount it. But again, that's a process, it's a whole thing. <laughs> it takes time. Uh, any other questions? Nope. Okay, great. Then I think that uh, we can pretty much wrap up today's class. I know we went through a lot. I know that there's some things in there that uh, we referenced that YouTube link for the pool company and some of these tools and resources. Again, got no problem emailing this out to you guys. Go to the website, bizforchrist.com and we will be happy to fill out a request form. We'll be happy to email you out whatever you've asked. Thank you. Thank you.